old hotel near the International District that has been granted National Historic Landmark status. It's part business, part museum, part reminder of a painful time in Seattle's history. Como Force Eric Johnson takes us deep inside the Panama Hotel. There's an old building and a door and a hole in a floor, and their existence nags at us like a whisper of guilt. Remember, they say, remember or repeat. We think we can imagine how it was then after Pearl Harbor, but unless we were there, alive and breathing, angry and scared, we have no idea. Would the Japanese land in a week? Would the United States exist in a year? Only this was known. The whole world was coming unglued. I've had an exciting life. I think it's been a good life. Mary Matsuda was 17 years old. The emotion that swirled around that time is truly understandable. This is war. And so in the aftermath, decisions were made. Decisions that in the hysteria of the moment seemed logical. Decisions that in time would become stains on the conscience of a great nation. Tens of thousands, citizens of Japanese descent, were yanked from their homes and sent away on buses to internment camps. Lost in the fog of war, of course, was the fact that they were Americans. We were told that we would have to leave on May 16th. So we had eight days. They were each allowed two suitcases. How do you pack a lifetime into two suitcases? Or 120,000 lifetimes? And the Panama Hotel on South Main Street stood silent witness to it all. So, you know, the question becomes, well, what do you take? We did the best we could. I took a Bible, um, and of course, we took our eating utensils, plate, bowl, cup. Someone asked Takashi Hori, the owner of the Panama Hotel, if they could leave some belongings in the basement, the stuff they couldn't take to the camps. He said yes. Word spread in the frantic, frenzied rush of the moment. The basement of the hotel filled up with trunks, boxes stuffed full of lives put on hold. The miracle of the Panama Hotel is they are still there today. I think it's something that needs to stay here in, in American history. It's very much a teaching tool. It is exactly as it was. Some Japanese Americans returned for their belongings after the war, but some had died, some had moved on, many never came back to the basement. And so their trunks remained. Just kind of passing through the caretaker. Jan Johnson bought the place in 1983. She runs the hotel, considers the place a living museum. It's as if 70 years never happened. I don't know why I do it. I have a different answer every day. It's, uh, I don't know. The soul of the Panama Hotel is in the basement. The hole in the floor is for the world to peek down into the sacred place to see what prejudice and panic look like. This is all everyday life stuff. And you, then you really start to think about why this is here and how people's lives, Americans' lives, were uprooted from their homes. Some years ago, the Japanese American National Museum went through most of the trunks, documented the contents, and put them back. They rest there still, covered now in bubble wrap, surrounded by the stuff of life, a set of golf clubs, a box of fishing tackle, portraits of Americans whose names are lost to time. Ooh. And the tools of an artist. Wow. Do you, uh, you feel ghosts in here? I think I am one. There is one trunk, though, the one you see from the hole in the floor above, that no one, not even Jan, has ever gone through. I will try and lift it. And where am I going to put it? Until now, carefully, we open the lid and peer into lives unknown. Oh, okay. To see what they treasured. 
There is a souvenir pillow from a distant day trip to Mount Rainier. This is a little purse with initials on it in metal. Wow. It's a coat. It's a bathing suit. It contains articles of people who wanted to save them. So to put those things in the basement of the Panama Hotel indicated their sense of, of faith and hope that something that was precious to them would endure over time. So yes, it is, I think, a sacred place. Time heals, they say. Pain slips away like half-remembered dreams. But there is a place, hallowed ground really, where time is frozen and pain is boxed up, piled high like the hopes of generations. It is the Panama Hotel, where a hole in the floor nags at us, like a whisper of guilt. Eric Johnson, Como 4 News. Perhaps you've heard of the novel Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. It's partially based on the history of the Panama Hotel. The owner, Jan Johnson, says the basement will stay exactly as it is for as long as she's alive.